Hello, and welcome to the first annual Waskers Award Ceremony. I am your host, Mr. We've got a lot of talented individuals joining us, including the one and only Nicolas Cage. Fuck you! Fuck you! Thanks, Nick. We've got Lars Van Trier in the back over there jacking off. What can I say? Um, I, I understand Hitler. Thank you, Lars. Very cool. And security, who's that old man over there? Can you get him out of here? Oh, I am so sorry. It's Tilda Swinton. She's not the only woman dressed as a man, as we have the cast of the Wild Boys here. <laughs> Calm down. You Eastionians will get your turn in the spotlight too. Now, without further ado, let's announce our first category. For the award of Weirdest Score, the nominees are the film noir inspired score by Disaster Piece for Under the Silver Lake, the heavy metal and gloomy swan song by Johan Johannesson for Mandy, the varied and haunting score by Tom York aka the guy who sings Creep for Suspiria, and the terrifying and unnerving score by Colin Stetson for Hereditary. So many great choices, but only one can get the award. And the Oscar goes to Johan Johansson for Mandy. While all the other scores were phenomenal, Mandy's score was the only one that felt like a character in the film. It really gave life to the movie and the film would have been a lesser one without it, despite the already fantastic visuals. For the award of Weirdest Atmosphere, an award combining cinematography, special effects, sound design, mixing, editing, and film editing. The nominees are Mandy for its red color descent into hell, The Wild Boys. For its stunning mix of black and white cinematography and vivid color, November. For its black and white cinematography and overall otherworldly atmosphere, Suspiria. For its retro feel and creepy ballet school. And Under the Silver Lake for its hidden codes and feeling of never ending mystery and intrigue. And the Wasper goes to Mandy. Once again, all great options, but Mandy's atmosphere, cinematography, editing, and sound design pretty much made the movie. You may accuse it of style over substance, but you can't deny that its style was fantastic. For the award of weirdest screenplay. The nominees are Mandy for its well-paced adventure story about LSD, cult, and bikers. The Wild Boys for its interesting structure, dialogue, and strange story. Snowflake for its meta storyline about screenplay within a screenplay. Under the Silver Lake for its ability to juggle mystery upon mystery. And sorry to bother you for its biting satire of capitalism as well-crafted and complex characters. And the Wasker goes to Snowflake. Once again, this was the only choice where the screenplay actually played a role in the It was a concept that could have easily gone confusing if handled incorrectly, but Snowflake executed the concept perfectly and added in a few weird twists in there for extra measure. Before we get into the big award, we have a new category which I kind of stole from the website 366weirdmovies.com. Go check them out, they have become my greatest inspiration in the past couple of years and have been a source for many weird movies. This category is that of the weirdest scene. Our nominees are, oh I forgot to do the voice, our nominees are the third act twist and sorry to bother you. Saying more would be a spoiler but for those that have seen the movie, it's a scene that starts with a line of cocaine. Or is it okay? Okay, I'm not doing the voice anymore, sorry about that. The crack abducting the cow scene from November. The homoerotic beat celebration in The Wild Boys. The songwriter scene in Under the Silver Lake. The Cheddar Goblin scene from Mandy. And the Pretzel Logic scene from Suspiria. And the Wasker goes to Mandy. Again, the Cheddar Goblin scene is an instant classic for a good reason. It's perfectly placed between the slow paced first half and the balls to the wall second half, and it is our first real taste of dark humor in the film. It could have easily been a throwaway scene, but the way it's used as almost a cruel joke to the protagonist and the strange content of the scene itself makes it one of the most memorable and weirdest scenes in the movie. Our next category is Weirdest Director. The nominees are Panos Cosmatos for Mandy, David Robert Mitchell for Under the Silver Lake, Boots Riley for Sorry to Bother You, Lars von Trier for The House That Jack Built, and Luca Guadagino for Suspiria. And the Wasker goes to Boots Riley 
or sorry to bother you. I was so close to giving this to Mandy again, so close. But the more I thought about it, Sorry to Bother You is one of the most impressive directorial debuts I've seen in a long time. Boots Riley's first feature is incredibly ambitious, smart, and somewhat accessible, somewhat being the operative word. Panos Cosmatos perfected his style and direction in Mandy, but Boots Riley hit it out of the park right on his first try. As for the war, the weirdest supporting actress, Mia Goff for making me care about her character in Suspiria. Tilda Swinton for her triple performance also in Suspiria. The entire female supporting cast of Under the Silver Lake. Yes, all of them. They were all important and I couldn't just pick one. So Ben Fallon Hogan for her hilarious performance in The House That Jack Built and Riley Keough for playing a sympathetic, simple-minded victim in The House That Jack Built. And the Oscar goes to... Was it really any other choice? Tilda Swinton. Her performance as three different characters was very subtle and nuanced and believable. Some people have been accusing it of stunt casting, but given that they were trying to hide it, I'm not so sure. I also think that her playing therapist had some purpose and therefore wasn't just stunt casting. For the award of weirdest supporting actor, David Cross as the white voice of Cassius Green in Sorry to Bother You, Bruno Gans as Virgil in The House That Jack Built, Patrick Fistler as the crazed conspiracy theorist and artist in Under the Silver Lake, Jeremy Bob as the mysterious songwriter in Under the Silver Lake, and Linus Rhodes as the cult leader in Mandy. And the Oscar goes to, once again, there was only one real choice here. The other nominees were only really there because I had to have five nominees. It's Linus Rhodes from Mandy. This performance was really intriguing to me as a very subtly mixed, intimidating with pathetic. During my first watch through, I noticed a transition between these two modes, but in my second watch through, I realized that he was playing the character with a hint of the pathetic in him at all times even when he seemed quite intimidating. Nicolas Cage was originally going to play this character, which would have been fantastic, but I'm glad that he didn't and we got these two fantastic performances instead, as I really can't see anyone else playing Red. For the award of weirdest actress, Andrea Riseborough, for haunting us as the titular character in Mandy. Dakota Johnson for making the chains in Susie's arc from the original movie believable in Suspiria. All the boys and the wild boys. Once again, couldn't really pick one as it was an ensemble cast and an ensemble performance. Tessa Thompson for playing a complex and human character in Sorry to Bother You. And Tony Collette for terrifying us with her grief in Hereditary. And the Oscar goes to... Tony Collette because she deserves it badly. She so really should have gotten an Oscar nomination for this role. Hereditary wasn't really a weird movie, but how good it is kind of overshadows that and gives it a place in this award ceremony. So much of what makes this movie so unsettling is Colette's realistic performance. Andrea Riseborough and Tessa Thompson really came close, but given their relative lack of screen time and the wow factor of Tony Collette's performance, I had to give them a pass. For the award of weirdest actor, Andrew Garfield for playing the mystery obsessed protagonist in Under the Silver Lake. Nicholas Cage for his emotional and maddening LSD fueled rampage in Mandy. Lakeith Stanfield for once again playing a complex and relatable protagonist in Sorry to Bother You. Matt Dillon for playing the titular serial killer and Lars von Trier, Ultra Eagle in The House That Jack Built. And Sam Lewick for being the dominating male presence with a soft side as the captain in The Wild Boys. And the Oscar goes to. The one true god, Nicholas Cage. Nick, would you like to make a speech? I was watching TV, the game, right? Ronaldo Hayes, he got tossed the ball, he was running with it, he was running, running, running. He jumped over three linebackers in midair. He sprouted antlers, like a gazelle. <laughs> like an elk. <laughs> he landed again, he ran, ran, ran. He scored a touchdown. <laughs> Apologies to Lakeith Stanfield. Shoot him again. His soul's still dancing. <laughs> I had to give it to Nicolas Cage. You have to do it. You have to. It's probably one of his best performances. Mandy was perfectly catered to his unique acting method. Scenes that would have been funny out of context were actually a mostly moving in context. This movie probably wouldn't have worked as well as it did without Nicolas Cage in the lead role. I think this may be the role that will finally earn him the respect and recognition he deserves. I'm also very excited to see him working with more weird directors and taking on more passion projects rather than just taking whatever roles are available. He's going to be working with Richard Stanley 
Stanley on the color of Space Adaptation and with Sion Sono. I'm so excited to see the new era of Cage we are getting. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for. The Weirdest Picture Award. The nominees are Hereditary, The House That Jack Built, November, Mandy, Sorry to Bother You, Snowflake, Under the Silver Lake, Suspiria, and The Wild Boys. And the Wasker goes to Sorry to Mandy Boys. Wait, what? Oh man, this was a tough decision. So what does one do when they can't decide? You run away and don't decide at all. At, that, at least that's what I do. <laughs> okay, good, goodbye folks. Okay, no seriously, the winner is... <sighs> Mandy! If this was really a Weirdest Picture Award, as in the Weirdest Picture is awarded, it would have gone to The Wild Boys as that is the weirdest movie nominated. But it is not the best movie nominated. In fact, it is probably my least favorite of the nominated movies. So I had to pick a movie that was both very weird and very good. Narrowing it down to Sorry to Bother You and Mandy. Then I flipped the coin. Nah, in reality it was always gonna go to Mandy because that is my personal favorite of all this year's movies. I mean, The Favorite and Roma are probably better movies objectively, and they deserve to grab all the Oscars they can get their hands on, but Mandy is still my favorite. It's certainly not for everyone though, and it is more of an experience than a movie. If you think you will enjoy something that is very visceral and slow-paced, then you will like Mandy, but it's certainly a very niche movie. I wouldn't recommend it to everyone. However, that really isn't the case with Story to Bother You, which is a movie that I think everyone, or at least most people, should see. If Mandy wasn't perfectly catered to my taste, Story to Bother You would have gone the awards hands down. So there you have it. Thank you for watching the first annual Waskers Awards ceremony. Please make sure to check out my previous video where I give a quick review of all these movies and check out my full length review of Mandy. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Stay weird, folks. Goodbye.